the Red Face Demon is an evil entity who may be as ancient as time itself. It resides in another world, another plane separate from the land of the living. Does this other plane have a, a name? Let's call it the further. It's possible that the demon came about in the 1700s, which is when historians believe the first modern carnival originated in the Caribbean, because Insidious director James Wan has described the demon's appearance as something out of a crazy mystical carnival. The tufts of hair protruding from the side of the head and razor-sharp teeth do bear a resemblance to another terrifying carnival entity from another plane of existence, Pennywise. However, other demons in the franchise have the ability to change their appearance, so it's possible that this demon is much older. But Redface's confinement to the further would not last forever. One of the main ideas expressed in the franchise is the inherent risk that comes with exploring the other world. I've been to that dark place too. It's not a place for pure souls. It is very dangerous things come back with you. And I believe that's exactly what happened when psychic medium Elise Rainier entered the further in about 2007. I'm guessing the year based on the fact that Insidious Chapter 3 takes place a few years before the first film and the main character, Quinn, has a T-Mobile sidekick 3, which came out in July 2006. Quinn's family isn't doing well, so it makes sense that she'd have last year's model. Quinn ends up getting stranded in the further by another demon, and Elise has to come out of retirement to rescue her. It seems that all is well after this, but Elise does not immediately realize what came back with her. She gets home to find her late husband's vest on the bed, and at first, she believes it was his spirit who placed it there. Then she notices a face in the closet. <laughs> to learn how this entity became attached to the Lambert family, what the demon is supposed to represent, and how its presence can still be felt today, stick around to the end of this video. This video is sponsored by Factor. Welcome to Horror History. Today I'm analyzing what most people consider the main antagonist of the Insidious franchise. In the film, he's referred to as the man with fire on his face, but in the end credits, he's tagged as Lipstick Face Demon. However, this seems to be more of a nickname created by the filmmakers because of the way that the special effects makeup was applied. The reason why he's called the Lipstick Face Demon is because he literally paints his face with a red lipstick. So many fans just refer to the character as the Red Face Demon. In addition to the Pennywise similarity that I already mentioned, Red Face seems to be an amalgamation of the scariest parts of many horrors in cinema. The obvious one that comes to mind is Darth Maul from Star Wars The Phantom Menace, whose iconic scene takes place at the end of a hallway of red lights, not unlike the demon in Insidious. Red Face also has long, claw-like hands, reminiscent of Freddy Krueger from A Nightmare on Elm Street. Freddy is known for haunting characters in their dreams, and before Dalton learns about astral projection in Insidious, he believes the further to be a dream world. The character also possesses a black body, a tail, a forked tongue, and fur around his hooved feet, giving off similarities to traditional depictions of Satan. The further is stated to be a limbo that exists before a ghost moves on, so it's possible that the red-faced demon is supposed to be the further equivalent of the devil. The character is played by Joseph Bishara. If that name sounds familiar, it's either because he's also the composer of the film's score, or because you recognize him from other roles he's played, such as Bathsheba in The Conjuring or Malthus in the Annabelle film, both of which I've already covered on Horror History. Who would have thought a composer would be the most frequent actor covered on this show? To understand how his character became attached to the Lambert family, we've got to take it back to Elisa's most personal investigation yet. In 2010, a few years into Elise's partnership with Specs and Tucker of SpectralSightings.com, she's called back to her hometown in New Mexico to deal with a demon who haunted her all the way back in her youth. It pulls her into the further, but she defeats it with the help of her mother and nieces. Little does she know, they are being followed by the red-faced demon, or something to that effect. As they make their way out of the Dark Realm, they take a wrong turn and end up in the further version of the Lambert family's attic. The further is not bound by time, meaning that wandering souls can visit events from past and possibly the future, although we've yet to see that happen. Dalton Lambert is the son of Josh Lambert, who Elise helped many years ago, and they see him fall off of an old ladder. But Elise doesn't know who he is yet and thinks they've gone the wrong way. From Dalton's perspective in the real world, he can't see any of them, but he does hear the crackling sound emitted by the red-faced demon. The reason that the red-faced demon has stayed with Elise for the last few years is because of her abilities as a medium. 
Although she rarely uses it, she has the ability to astral project. She can project her spirit out of her body and into the further. The demon's goal is to possess the bodies of the living. Most non-living entities crave life, but Elise later explains that this demon wants to possess a body simply to cause pain to others. When the demon sees Dalton, it realizes that he too has the ability to astral project and sees him as an easier target because of his naivety as a kid. Dalton believes his astral projection is just a fun dream, so he's not afraid to venture deep into the further, thus leaving his body as an open vessel for an evil spirit to try to possess. Because of this, Redface sticks with Dalton and coaxes him further and further into the further. See, that's why they call it that. Each demon or major entity has their own space in the further behind a red door, and these doors can connect to different locations and time periods. Redface puts a door to his lair right in the Lambert's attic, essentially replacing the connection between their California home and Elisa's New Mexico home that used to be there. Perhaps because he was curious about the noise he heard there, and perhaps partially because he's been banned from the attic in real life, he visits the location in what he thinks is his dream, and goes far enough into the demon's lair to discover this horse statue, which he draws a picture of when he wakes up. Dalton also sees Redface at some point and draws pictures of him as well, in addition to the red doors. This picture shows it standing at the semicircle shaped window next to the spinning machine that it uses to sharpen its claws. It's possible that Dalton was at first intrigued by this brightly colored new friend and went deeper and deeper into the further to try to get a look at him. Director James Wan and screenwriter Lee Winnell allude to the idea that his appearance is supposed to be inviting to children at first. It's kind of like a clown, you know, it's his twisted way of trying to make himself look like a good happy person to try and entice you to him. He's the one who's out there trying to suck in the spirits of innocent people, especially children, try and get them out of their bodies, to draw them out into the further so that he can then go in and inhabit their body. In my opinion, it didn't work. He's just straight up terrifying. But this is a horror movie, and that's a good thing. The music he listens to also plays into the idea that he's trying to entice Dalton. His favorite song is Tiptoe Through the Tulips by Tiny Tim. You can imagine a kid being drawn in by the silly falsetto vocals and ukulele strums, but once you you get into the demon's lair and hear it echoing through an empty realm of tortured souls, you start to realize, oh yeah, this song is creepy AF. In an interview with the film stage, James Wan refers to it as serial killer music. It would not be long before Dalton began referring to these dreams as nightmares, and he'd eventually find himself in one nightmare he could not wake up from. Food. I eat it, you eat it, some people even blog it. But cooking healthy meals can be expensive and take a lot of time. The solution is to get Factor. Not only is Factor cheaper than takeout, but meals are ready quicker than restaurant delivery in just two minutes. They deliver the meals right to your door, so you don't even have to think about making a trip to the store. Their registered dietitians work hand in hand with their kitchen to ensure that every meal is made from scratch with nutritious ingredients. Your meal is delivered fresh, never frozen to your door. Just heat, eat, and enjoy. Amp up your Factor order with add-ons like proteins, juice, juices, energy bites, veggie sides, desserts, and more. And don't worry, Factor snacks and desserts accommodate those following plant-based and keto diets. I've been enjoying HelloFresh unsponsored for over a year, so when Factor reached out and I found out that they're owned by HelloFresh, I knew that I had to try it, and it ended up being perfect for me. It tastes great, and it saves me time. Which, I guess I am now using that time to shoot and edit this ad read, but it will save me time in the future. Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code CZ60 to get 60% off your first Factor box. Who else gives 60% off? Just use code CZ60 to save. Josh and Renee Lambert have just moved into their new home with their three children when strange things start to occur. In reality, I can't tell you if the red-faced demon is responsible or if it was just one of the other many ghosts attracted to Dalton seeking a human body to inhabit. Something moves some of Renee's books, there's a breathing sound heard in the house, which may have just been a draft, a furnace turns on in the attic all on its own, and the attic door opens without anyone touching it. That one probably was the demon, trying to lure Dalton up the stairs. Renee's sheet music also goes missing, and she finds it in that same attic. Finally, the ladder breaks under Dalton, and although he's okay at first, the next morning he doesn't wake up. In reality, the fall is not what hurt him. That night, he went too deep into the demon's lair and was captured and chained to some kind of demonic shrine. With him trapped in the further, the demon, or any of the other spirits that have shown up at the house, would have an opportunity to take possession of the vacant vessel. Three months go by, and Dalton still appears to be in a coma. He's living at home off of IVs. Renee is working downstairs when she hears something in the baby monitor. The voice says he won't wake up, there's nothing you can do. Again, it isn't clear if this is Redface himself or one of the other spirits. What is clear is what this voice wants. Now! 
the Weinberg's other son, Foster, becomes afraid of rooming across the hall from Dalton because he claims that his brother is walking around at night, which is most likely a result of the demon who can be invisible in the real world, puppeting his body around the house. They also find red handprints on Dalton's sheets with long pointed fingers. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds would have had a field day with this. When Redface first discovers the unoccupied body, Elise sees it in her dream. In the real world, handprints manifest themselves on the window. Convinced that their house is haunted, the Lamberts move again, but the spirits that haunt the place follow the scent of Dalton's uninhabited self, and the paranormal activity continues in the new house. As Renee is taking the trash out, the evil creature changes her music to something a little more to its own liking. The grandmother comes to the house and sees strange things as well. One night, she had a dream, which was an out-of-body experience into the further, where she saw the demon in silhouette while checking on Dalton in his room. It told her that it was a visitor, and when she asked what it wanted, it pointed to Dalton. The next day, when telling the story to Josh and Renee, Redface makes a more direct appearance. It disappears into Dalton's room and locks the door shut as it tears through everything, leaving the place in complete disarray, with the comatose boy laying on the ground when they regain entry. Having seen enough, they call in Elise, Specs, and Tucker. They bring in something called a Trifield Meter, and Tucker picks up the red-faced demon's crackling noises. Then again, outside of Foster's room, and when Elise visits Dalton's room, she hears the noises coming from right above his bed. Being the only one able to see the monster, she describes it to Specs, who sketches something very similar to Dalton's drawings, and is also really creepy. After seeing it potentially speaking to Renee on the baby monitor, appearing IRL behind Josh, and allowing the paranormal investigators to make a sketch, I don't think Redface fears the humans, even Elise, who has the power to see what it's up to. It's certainly different from James Wan's other demon hunting franchise, The Conjuring, where we see some entities trying to hide themselves from the paranormal investigating protagonists. Redface has probably never faced a formidable foe, and has no reason to be scared of humans. Plus, Elise is portrayed to be much less superhero-y than Lorraine Warren. And Specs and Tucker combined are still probably less a jack-of-all-trades than Ed Warren is. For these reasons, I like these investigators way more, but that's neither here nor there. Elise explains the nature of Dalton's coma in the now famous line. It's not the house that's haunted. It's your son. She goes on to explain that many nearby entities can smell the open vessel that is Dalton's body, but the demon is the only one who is very close to possessing him. The team sets up cameras around where they'll be performing a seance and seem to connect with the boy's spirit, but he stops talking when the demon notices what he's up to, and he eventually claims that if the man with fire on his face hears him, he's going to hurt him, and not long after, the evil entity hijacks the communication and berates Elise with obscenities, threatening to rip her innards out and eat the guts that spill from her. For the first time in months, outside of Foster's claims about him sleepwalking, Dalton moves. He appears to sleepwalk over to the group and smack the table, effectively air yeeting everyone in its vicinity. He also smacks Specs, sending him flying across the room into a wall. While it would appear that Dalton has been possessed to do these things, one of the still frames eventually reveals that the red-faced demon was only standing behind the boy, essentially puppeting his body. It takes time for an entity of the further to actually possess somebody, and Redface was at the doorstep, but not quite there. Regardless, Elise's retaliation seemed to do the trick for the time being, and the demon retreated to its lair to presumably sharpen up its claws one last time before making an ultimate attempt at taking over Dalton's body. An interesting detail about the lair is the demon's collection of marionettes, which are likely symbolic of the way that Redface puppeteered Dalton's body during the seance. It seems it was able to do this convincingly because it practiced to become an expert using these puppets. The lair is also decorated with with gothic revival architecture, featuring great chandeliers and candelabras, Roman-looking statues everywhere, gargoyles, a low-lying fog, and a giant mass looking upwards. The scene was filmed in the Herald Examiner building in downtown Los Angeles, one of the few examples of 100-year-old architecture that still maintains a sheen of luxury, perfect for this demon, who is both ancient and powerful among the world of demons. But the demon's netherworldly and manicure is interrupted when it notices the spirit of Josh Lambert, who is projected into the further to try to save his son, and the interruption of the further's most nefarious creature would not be welcome.
After finding out why his son refers to this demon as the man with fire in his face firsthand, he's aerated across the room by the creature's screech, but the distraction allows Dalton, now free from his chains, to escape. The demon can be seen charging and knocking Josh down a second time before he gets to his feet, scoops up his son, and runs for it, leaving the red-faced demon to track them with its piercing yellow eyes. This battle was not over, and its ferocity was shaking the entire house back in the real world. The father and son find themselves surrounded by wandering spirits, having called too much attention to themselves, and Josh uses the last of his energy to get them back to the house. Unable to go on, he stops to rest and tells Dalton to go on ahead and return to his own body. But before the boy can get there, he's ambushed by his demonic captor who is waiting for him in his room. Dalton flees to his parents' room, but Redface once again teleports through the further, and this time emerging under the bed to try to drag the child under. But he wiggles free and runs down the hall. Redface then unleashes more of his power by wall crawling out of the room, the drywall crumbling with each step that he takes, but he's unable to recapture Dalton, who makes it back to his physical body, closing the door on any chances of being possessed. The only other available vessel, then, is Josh, who does get partially possessed by another entity known as the Bride in Black, leaving no available landing spot for the demon with the red face. He can't even go back to stalking Elise, because she's killed by the Bride in Black, so her body is no longer of use. With this development, Red Face seems to just give up on the Lambert family and move on to a new target, a girl named Allison, who also had the ability to astral project. Allison was in some kind of accident and had to be resuscitated at the hospital. But while she was out, she seemingly ventured into the further and brought the red-faced demon back with her. After helping the Lambert family clear out their evil spirits a second time, Specs and Tucker visit Allison's family to try to offer assistance, with Elise tagging along as a spirit in the further. When Elise tries to elicit a response from Allison, she seems to be as empty of a shell as Dalton once was, and it's not long before Elise figures out why. Elise recognizes that sound from the haunting that resulted in her losing her own life. The battle was not over. The upcoming Insidious Fear the Dark, aka Chapter 5, will supposedly catch up with the Lambert family 10 years later. As much as scary ghosts plus scary virus sounds like a terrifying combination, I am going to be very frustrated if we don't get a follow-up on this cliffhanger. However, if we do see Darth Maul's lost cousin again, I'll be sure to update this video. Make sure you don't miss that or any of my other Insidious character analyses by subscribing to CZ's World for new horrors every week, ringing that death bell for all notifications, and I will see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive. Thank you.